Recording in progress. Não estou ouvindo, Paulo. Nós estamos iniciando o um curso uh, de saúde global, de diplomacia da saúde. We started a course here in collaboration with the Pan American Organization of Health. Courses from the National Public Health School in Rio Cruz and Vice Presidents for teaching in Fire Cruz because we incorporated the update course as a transversal discipline offered by Fio Cruz entitled Advanced Seminaries in Global Health and Diplomacy in Health. The seminar has the support and the collaboration for SEM and the Latin American Alliance for Global Health. So this seminar is multidimensional because it will deal on the agenda of global health, appreciated and approved by the great collegiate of the assembly in Geneva last May, and also the cooperation of several organizations that are part of this effort to transform the world through diplomacy in health that is inclusive and is fostering equality and cooperation between countries and to foster the political world, not only to talk about decisions, but to enforce them as well. It will be a very rich seminar coordinated by our colleague from Osvaldo Cruz Foundation, which is also from Georgetown University. But first, I will have three quick slides that Alex will set on the screen for us to share. In this little presentation, is about what I was talking about. We want to position you there is a simultaneous process, as we said, with objectives that are distinct, the course and the transversal discipline. And today it resounds in this opus offered with Fiocruz, with the Collaboration Center in Global Health Diplomacy and the South-South Cooperation. The opening session has Took, taken place. Now we have the seminar and the, in the afternoon we have a great introduction about global health and diplomacy. And we will have a panel that it will be very interesting. So this is the seminar we are starting now with Ricardo Tapeba, our secretariat for Indigenous People's Health, Maria Moreira, Ambassador Alexandre Guzlén. I will not mention everyone, but Paula Regis today celebrates her birthday. So when she will present, maybe we'll sing a happy birthday for her. Great for us to have a birthday girl here, Daisy Ventura, dearest. She's a reference in international law and also two surprise guests. Luis Galvão will also 
be here. Next, my last slide is the afternoon agenda. Everyone can participate. We have an introduction in global in diplomacy and health. The UN system presented by the ambassador. Health and multilateralism in Latin America by Sebastian Tobar. Also in Africa with our colleague Augusto Paulo Silva. Global South and South-South Cooperation, Health and BRICS with our colleague Claudia Hoyrich. And from South Africa, Pedro Burger will present Health and G7 and G7 and G20. And Luis Eugenio Souza from the Federal University of Bahia, who's also the president of the organization, will talk from Salvador about the civil society and health. We do this work from the Observatory of Global Health and Health Diplomacy, analyzing all these organizations listed on the left with the UN and Human Rights Council, the WHO, PNUD, PNUMA, UN Water, World Labor Organization. There's a great, huge event with the Habitat Agency going on right now. UNICEF, the disaster area as well. The Food and Nutrition Program the refugee program, the financial institutions, G7, G20, G77. Next slide, please. And so we have these notebooks, Chris Fiocruz, that will be food for thought for each one of you that not, in addition to being in the seminars, you will receive every fortnight here with the seminar in the next 15 days, you will be able to see all the updates. This is great reading material. And this will be up to you if you are going to read them or not. It's about 200 pages every fortnight. So the seminars is are the other result of the observatory. All the seminars are being recorded and maybe available through this portal. And all the notebooks will be at this address. You can access from the first notebook and the last one from last week, which is notebook nine from 2023. And all the seminars can be accessed since the first one in this portal. Having said, thank you all for being here. Through YouTube, we also have a lot of people watching all the seminars in Portuguese, Spanish, and English. We have simultaneous interpretation. And let's go forward with Luis Galvão. We will direct today's seminar. Luis Augusto Galvão is a senior researcher in, for Chris and global health and professor at Georgetown University in Washington, United States. So you have the floor to do it as greatly as you always do. Thank you, Paulo. Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon. Maybe there are people from other countries watching us. It's a pleasure to be back here with this responsibility that Paulo gave me to coordinate this high-level seminar about the World Health Assembly. We just came back from there. We are part of the Brazilian committee 
It was great to be there. Paulo is also here, one of her much as well. She's in transit, so she couldn't be here today, but she was also part of that. I only have one slide just to remind me where we stand. Just a moment, please. Just to remember the role of the assembly, this is a publication, I used this. I think we, we need to improve this to update it. But this shows the governance system for global health. WHO is the center is the coordinator of all the system with its ramifications, including collaboration centers, which Chris is one of them, and the countries, etc. But at this moment in the assembly, in addition to the WHO, all these other actors of global health are there. So philanthropies, the funders of global health, some of them are known, such as Rockefeller, Gallup, oh, they are all there. Civil society, which our colleague Luis is president of the Federation of Public Associations, many others, but they have limited interests as societies around the non-communicable diseases, the associations also of the industries, everything from civil society also participate in the assembly. There are many organisms, multilateral organisms. UNICEF basically is one of them, it acts a lot with WHO, but there are several others. We even had this year the Climate Association, the United Nations, all the multilateral organizations. A lot of the hybrid organizations, such as Gavi, Global Fund, UNITAID, there are associations with civil society, academia, government, sometimes private companies. They are also present in the academic institutions such as Fiocruz, integrating several of the different committees of countries participating in one academic institution that is very important is the Institute for Graduation in Geneva, where Luana is located, which is very important. We have other agencies that participate, several collaboration agencies, multilateral, bilateral. The African Union, for example, sends representatives, the European Union sends representatives, and private sector eventually, sometimes it's outside the, the United Nations context, but they also have the representation there. There's a great press coverage, Maybe you got some of the news. Fiocruz is covering it very well this year. And all of this is about being in the assembly. This is a great advantage of the assembly. The assembly is, is a kind of 10G in, in global health communications. We have 4G, 5G in our mobile phones. This is the 10G of global health. Everybody's there, we communicate. There are parallel meetings, official meetings, plenary sessions, and we pass resolutions. That we will see throughout the, today's session. And I will not be long because we have a lot to talk about. 
But we also have, in the end, Paulo will have an overlook of all the, what's being talked today. And I will talk a little bit about the, the climate issue, because Assembly talked a lot about climate this year. This global health system is going through a very special moment. It's a transformation moment with the governance rule. With the pandemic event and all the, the questions and learnings generated this update of the health regulations, but also the building of a new framework for pandemics. And we'll talk about this here. Do Brasil. Yeah. We'll also talk about the big conquer of Brazil with the Secretary Abe, that is the resolution on the indigenous people. So imagine that we are this year celebrating, and by the way, this is one of the main highlights because we celebrate 75 years. This is the Jubilee of that. Just like you, Paulinha, you are celebrating your birthday, and well, Paulinha is not celebrating 75 years old, only the WHO when up to now there was no resolution in this sense about indigenous health and this is one of the main uh, highlights and conquers of you and we'll talk about all that uh, during the session today so i won't take any longer here i'll just talk a little bit more to introduce you to how we are thinking uh, how we are designing today's session and we'll start with this introduction of from paulo and me and then we'll have uh, secretary emmy who will participate talking about the importance of the resolution and the indigenous peoples and how to deal with that because we need to go on with this implementation of the resolution and the international network of pathogen diseases and uh, the hub of WHO when President Mario Moreira will talk about it and then we'll see the importance of ME in the 76th Assembly in Brazil with the participation of Alexa, Ambassador Alexandre from the Ministry who will talk about how everything happened from the point of view of how he commanded all the Brazilian activity there and he was a great organizer of everything so we will we'll be privileged to have him with us and then we'll talk about the negotiation body uh, something that was created during the pandemic and then you have a surprise video with the comments of Professor Daisy Ventura, our colleague and member and coordinator of the working group of Rio Cruz with USP about the main decisions and then we'll have the approved resolutions and the new uh, policies created that Paula will present and I'll talk a little bit more about the weather and then we'll have a closing session also with a surprise video of a very special and important person to the relation uh, between Brazil and the WHO. So this is the general overview that we are thinking for today's session and that I hope everyone make the most of it. We'll also uh, follow this, the, the event and be available in the afternoon if you have questions or comments because I know many specific topics will be discussed and sometimes you want to uh, know more about it, go deeper on how this will be done or that works. So if it happens, please send your messages to the chat because our uh, panelists will have the opportunity to answer them and you can have anticipated questions you don't need for the speaker to uh, speak if you have a doubt already a question write it there in our chat so that when they speak they already know the questions and concerns and doubts so that they can approach it well that's what i had to say i would like to know if secretary wave is here with us already i don't know how to find him 
I don't know, maybe people in the, uh, the technicians can help us find secretary. Well, I can't find him in the participants. Well, we need to locate Wavy or the Ministry of Health because he will be in Brasilia participating remotely. Wavy or anyone watching on his behalf until he arrives. Can we see someone there in our list of participants? Well, he would be speaking now. He's not connected. Well, apparently he's not there, so let's go on with our agenda. Paula can go to her presentation. Okay, so after him, we will have then the secretary. Just a second, the secretary is answering, uh, sending me a message. Okay, he's connecting, he's coming here because he just received the wrong link. So, guys, you see how complex it is to have participation from Geneva, Porto Alegre, uh, Salvador, Brazil, Rio, from a tax, uh, taxi in Rio. So we somehow facilitate our lives, but we complicate them. But we try to make the most of what we have. Uh, sometimes we'll use the lemons to make a lemonade, sometimes with the sugar, sometimes without, but it will always be something to drink. Okay, let me see if he's already there, because he was connecting already. Well, I think I'll keep talking about the assembly, because we have a lot to talk, and I would like to say that Brazil's mission in Geneva just for you to understand how complex it is, is because it's a joint work with the participation in the assembly, not only of Brazil, but all countries. And this is also an ex exercise to the country because they are there with the Ministry of Health. There is an expert department that is there along with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. So this is a joint effort. So in Brazil, the organization and the command of this work is uh, belong to our representation in Geneva, Gebral Gente, that we have Ambassador Tovar, that he is the chief of that in Geneva. He is a permanent representative of Brazil in the uh, organization with the whole team to set the meetings and having many uh, different times in the agenda and scheduling the bilateral discussions with the WHO and so on and on. So there is this whole participation that is quite important and that is coordinated here in Brazil by two different bodies, the Ministry of Health in the international part and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And what they talk among uh, themselves and uh, with the other institutions. So we have the Ministry of Health discussing with Fiocruz and Anvisa and other foundations and associations and the national secretaries. Okay, we have Secretary Wavy here. Uh, welcome. It's a pleasure to have you here in the session. So now I'll pass on the floor to you. Thank you very much for accepting the invitation. We are all very happy to have you here. We know that you are uh, in the middle of many activities in your community, but we thank you a lot for your participation. It's quite important to us. Welcome, and the floor is yours. Your mic is off. Okay, can you hear me well? Yeah, now we can hear you. Well, 
First, I would like to thank for the invitation on behalf of the Ministry of Health and the Special Secretary of Indigenous Health. This seminar is quite important to us. This is the opportunity we have to deal with the great conquer that the indigenous peoples worldwide had in the 76th Assembly of the WHO. It was an activity carried out in Geneva, in the UN uh, headquarters, and we are celebrating our 75 years of foundation of the WHO, and it's the first time the WHO adopts the resolution to deal with indigenous people. So first, I would like to reinforce the importance of this symbolic and political moment led by the Brazilian government and acknowledge that the main role of the Fiocruz team was important to help us collaborate in the development of the minute so that we could have, with the expertise of our friends in Fiocruz, to present a coherent text that is responsible for translating the responsibility of the diversity of indigenous people worldwide and also to attract uh, fellow countries and allied countries to co-sponsor the proposal of the resolution that was adopted in the 76th uh, World Assembly carried out in Geneva. I had the opportunity to be part of the committee led by our minister Lizette Zimbadge and we had an intense agenda of events and bilateral discussions in which Brazil is again in the international scenario and uh, celebrating partnerships and commitments and the participation of important players in this delegation was very important to be present in Geneva to participate in this assembly. And obviously, the main conquer of the Brazilian government of, of our country was to approve and adopt this resolution. So I would like to emphasize and strengthen this feeling of gratitude for being there at that moment. I defended on behalf of our government in the general uh, plenary of WHO. I defended the resolution and the other countries that also supported and co-sponsored our resolution had the opportunity of speaking as well. And this is a very symbolic moment because we started this government facing well, the pandemic at first in the territories of the indigenous peoples. Uh, in the previous government, we had to organize with the articulations of peoples to start a lawsuit in the Supreme Court, and Fiocruz also worked as a partner and a brasco other institutions uh, who helped with this process. And with uh, a bill of law, we were able to oblige the Brazilian government to adopt measures to mitigate the impacts of the pandemic in the indigenous territories. And we started this government also facing a sanitary emergency in the Yanomami territories that you all know, I guess. You know how uh, how awful was the emergence with the national and international repercussion. We are dealing with the greatest indigenous peoples in the world, with more than 30,000 indigenous, more than 380 communities, and the access to the territory is almost 100% made by air. So we have a lot of infrastructure and logistic limitations, and we are there coordinating the emergency, and we created a center for emergencies to uh, be able to have a national committee uh, of organization that is coordinated by the Ministry uh, of uh, Civil Defense. And it was in the scenario that was of dismantling the government, but it represents a new moment for the indigenous policies in Brazil in the relation of the Brazilian state and the indigenous people in respecting and protecting the rights of indigenous people. So first, I would like to reinforce that this resolution brings a lot of measures to uh, compromise the nations of the planet to foster the support and the funding of the policies of indigenous health care. 
I should remind you that the result of a great mobilization of indigenous people in Brazil made us able to implement a subsystem of uh, indigenous care that is related to the unified health system. We have a national policy of health care for indigenous that is regulated. So today in our country, we have a structure of a subsystem that is known and acknowledged by the Brazilian state. And this experience in Brazil will help the other countries in the implementation of the national plan, as I believe that with this resolution, we'll have an important aspect that is the commitment of the countries worldwide to first have an international pact for the health of indigenous people and also to commit the countries to create their national plans on the health of indigenous people. There are some other aspects like developing knowledge on the context of indigenous health in the territories so that we can uh, collect data because unfortunately we do have uh, poor results in terms of epidemiology and it's important for the institutions and government to plan their strategic actions to face and promote health and prevent diseases. And the resolution approved also bring this important ed, uh, indicator. The access of coverage for physical and mental health we need to recognize that here in Brazil, we have several essential voids that we need to cover these territories and physical and mental health in these populations need also to be faced as priorities. We also in included in, in the resolution, the indicator of development and implementation of these plans and strategies the necessity of reduction of the gender and social inequality and geographical barriers, the equal access to quality service in indigenous lands. These are pillars in the unified health systems, the principles of universality and integrality. We understand that these base principles of the unified health system needs to be seen with a lot of responsibility and seen the indigenous lands as special areas that we need to ensure the universalization of coverage for the assistance of indigenous peoples to reduce the inequalities certainly is a very important parameter that is foreseen in this resolution we also added in the minute the need for approach in intercultural intersectoral about health of the indigenous people if we don't implement the health model that also recognize and respect the ways of life the interculturality the social, cultural heritage and traditions we impose a health system that could be nocive to these populations so the respect to the social organizations and customs and tradition identity memory the traditional knowledge, these are aspects that we are translating into this minute of our resolution. I would also like to reinforce that our intention was with the indicator that countries can fund and implement these national plans. This resolution was approved unanimously and it also determines that national authorities should foster the attraction and the formation and recruitment and retention of indigenous peoples as health agents bringing this knowledge and traditional practices. I can say very easily that this resolution has huge evolution in this text about prioritizing the workforce of the, the indigenous people themselves being trained, going through formations, and also these indigenous people that have this traditional knowledge can be incorporated to the teams that are in action in the territories occupied by these populations. 
So I'd like to recognize this symbolic moment led by our country, by Brazil. This is still a difficult moment, but it shows the international community that Brazil is back, the science is back, and we have the commitment with the indigenous peoples in our country. And more than just that, we are also worried with the other countries so they don't face this health emergency faced by the Yanomami indigenous people. So I'd like to wrap up thanking for the opportunity and socializing a little bit of this great victory that we had and share with you the importance of the Pan American Health Organization. Opus was also fundamental in this articulation process with the other countries, especially Latin American countries, countries that have indigenous populations. We had a huge vision and unanimous decision. So thank you once more. I'd like to reinforce the Ministry Nisia for her participation in this process and the representation of Brazil in Geneva at the UN. We mobilized, articulated with the other countries so there's no rejection or veto in this minute with the resolution. Brazil is not only committed with the approval of the minute, but we are also committed with the implementation of this resolution. We are planning already this consultation process with the indigenous population, thinking about the elaboration of the national plan for indigenous people's health in the country. We understand that this is the moment for us to elaborate this plan, this audacious plan, to generate this revolution of indigenous health, pointing to the overcoming of these voids in infrastructure, and existentialism, working with indigenous people, thinking about funding and strengthening of social control, interfederation relationship, interministerial, using as priority the health of indigenous people. Thank you once more for the opportunity. As always, wonderful to hear you speak. It's very inspiring. It's great that we're started with this intervention of the highest quality possible. All the students, are 180 students here, here in this presentation, a lot of manifestations in the chat, congratulations, it's very important. Let's support it. The same thing I saw in Geneva. I was happy enough to be there with the secretary in a parallel event and it was great. The, the room was packed, representatives from the US, Canada, European Union, Africa, and they all stood up to support. And secretary, thank you once more for your participation. It's great to have you here. And I hope that we can all contribute and participate and continue to collaborate with this very important mission that you are carrying on. We are very proud to have you as our leadership and to see at last this issue being faced with the importance it needs to through your work and our health ministry, Nisa Trindade, as well. I know you're very busy. Thank you very much for opening this slot in your agenda for us. We're very thankful. We have an agenda with Minister Nisia now at 11 o'clock. And I'd like to say your personal action as well with the elaboration of the minute is a great service. I'd like to recognize you as well and thank you and all the students that are watching here as well. Thank you very, for, very, very much for the opportunity. We, well, the whole team sees you as a great opportunity that you're giving us 
It's a pleasure. You can always count on us. Right. See you later. Thank you, Secretary. You can count on Fiocruz in your activities in national and international levels. Thank you very much. So, going on, now we have another very important participation of the greatest relevance marked the World Health Assembly, which is our president, Mario Moreira, president of Fiocruz, with the participation and the comments about the assembly. Alongside the secretary, was very important presence there. We were along the secretary in several of these opportunities, but specifically Fiocruz had great relevance in two moments. One, accompanying the, the ministry, the president will talk about that, and the pathogens network and the Berlin hub. President, you have the floor. Thank you very much for watching. In the name of all the students and the coordination here, I know you have a very tight agenda. So thank you for your time. Good morning. I'd like to say hello to everyone who's here, all the participants of this seminar. I'd like to have a general comment made before we start. First, about my inauguration. As a, it was my first World Health Assembly. I've always been with Nisa pre preparing documents for her participation, but it was my first time. And I'd like to highlight an observation. It's more of a political of the climate of the assembly. Brazil was very welcome, positioning as representative of a government that values technology and health and will have a key role in the development of global health. This was very important for me. It was very clear the great affectionate reception of, of the Brazilian representatives there. This will unfold in what I will continue to say. Also, like to highlight the great organization of the Brazilian team with Ambassador Tovar and Minister Nisia. A great fine tuning interaction that allowed Brazil to have very productive participation. President Nisia decided to bring a healthy team including secretariats and so, civil society representations, health secretariat of Ceará State. There were several perspectives included in the team, so it also favored the, the wide debate. It was very productive, as I was saying. Few Cruz was also part of the mission, and I'd like to highlight the small but very valorous team headed by me as president of Fiocruz, but also I'd like to say that with an impressive basis of information, this experience and knowledge of the halls of the WHO and the dynamics of assembly, that is this trio here, but I don't know if Luana is here, but Guto, sensational. And as the secretary also said, one of the most important people in the minute composition, Paula Helles, Paulinha, kisses to you, happy birthday, and Luana Bermud. Even though it's my first experience, I felt very comfortable to participate in the meetings. I was very well supported. So the, here's the recognition and the thanking for you and also Chris' team that made the support possible here from Brazil. 
before going on, there's two questions about the hub and the local production. I'd like to share an impression with you. In fact, the pandemic is causing deep changes in the relationship between countries and also in the multilateral agencies in the perspective of preparing the world for situations that could be repeated with the dimension of the COVID-19 pandemic. I don't know if it's a more friendly word, but it's more conscious, more conscious that we need to have global actions. We, it's no use for countries to do it individually. So it's in nature, we in fact need global actions. I would also say that the acknowledgement of Brazil's work and the resilience of the unified health system and mainly the work of Fiocruz during the pandemic made Fiocruz to be the central role somehow during the assembly with many meetings, both following the minister in what is related to the activities of Fiocruz, obviously, uh, mainly local production and the hub of the pandemic surveillance, but also with many meetings in uh, with the hybrid institutions that I say that are not bilateral, but they have uh, important work in the world and are also important players in the development of the strategies and in some cases not only to develop the strategies but also to operate the strategies as it is the case that i would like to emphasize here of the local production to me it's quite clear and it brings to few crews a high level of responsibility and i'll try to develop this idea here regarding the signing of the memo one day before the uh, starting of the assembly works, Fiocruz participated on a panel about pandemic uh, surveillance. And during this panel, uh, there was a discussion of uh, about the negotiation process to conclude and to uh, sign that during the assembly. And I would say that this hub is a very good idea, very positive one, to gather excellence groups, both from the academia uh, and to the technology and health public, uh, public health care system to emphasize and reinforce the surveillance in a more creative and sophisticated way than the ones that we know so far. I'm talking about the ability of developing tools and open platforms able to detect possibilities of uh, epidemics and pandemics and Fiocruz was invited based on three experiences they had at, in this area because we have here in Rio the lab coordinator by Dr. Marilda Cerqueira with great experience in surveillance, surveillance of respiratory diseases, uh, world reference in influenza that was uh, remembered one, as one of the corporations that Brazil can take to the hub. The second one is ProTCE, our center of data processing in health with many mechanisms and technologies to deal with uh, big data banks and mathematic models of analysis that is also important. We understood that and we used this ability during the pandemic. And lastly, with the work carried out in Bahia in the development of a platform called ISOP that is capable of detecting the traditional information in health and also a set of information uh, in social media and other data bank, not only related to healthcare, but also primary attention. And with that, they created a model to detect possible onset of uh, epidemics. And it will also contribute a lot 
to Theo Cruz being a different entity in this hub uh, that is installed there. Maybe in the next weeks we'll have uh, discussions about it to define how Theo Cruz will participate in this hub, thinking not only about the contribution to the development of the world system, but also uh, to strengthen their surveillance center and their system of, sur of surveillance. Another important that is also emphasized, and I would say once again, is, uh, let's say, a global perspective thinking on how to face situations like this, that is the local production. Uh, well, a lot was discussed in the past, and we discussed even during the pandemic about the need of a better and more organized world regarding the production capacity and to ensure access to a healthcare uh, plans and insurance based on the pain we faced during the pandemic, in which we saw the greatest amount of death of 25% of the world population uh, took 70% of the vaccines available in the world. So it showed not only the asymmetry in access to products in which the central countries purchase basically the whole world uh, production, and it also showed the lack of efficiency in behaviors in the sense that a few part of the population was vaccinated, but the greatest majority was circulating with the virus uh, producing new concerning variants, as we could see, and the conclusion is that situations like that uh, need the greatest part of the population vaccinated and not only some countries as it happened. So this is an important point. And I would say that for this specific point, Rio Cruz is being invited to this global effort. And as Uto said, Rio Cruz is understood as an academic institution in uh, public health and biomedical sciences. But Rio Cruz is also a big pharmaceutical company. Just for you to have an idea, during the pandemic period, uh, Rio Cruz was the first pharmaceutical company working in the country, even uh, considering the multinationals that we have in the country. As it was shown by the media with documents of your cruise, we were able to nationalize the production of the vaccine developed by the Oxford University in less than a year, and also the production of more than 200 million doses of vaccine. Uh, also with the Butantan and the vaccine that was operated with the Chinese uh, technology, but we were able to deal with the most critical moment of the pandemic, uh, supply more than 300 million doses, and we could save a lot of lives with the efforts of producers, of public producers. This is based on this perspective that you is not only invited to participate on this world effort, this global effort, but also due to their ability to produce and develop and I would also say by a new responsibility that Kyoku is, is taking to be a regional producer in association in this specific case with uh, an Argentinian private lab to be a provider of vaccine against COVID based on the messenger RNA technologies. This is a world effort guided by the WHO and also in our case by the Pan American Health Organization that takes Rio Cruz to the central role as an operator and producer and developer of a vaccine to be available to many countries in the region. In this sense, I would like to emphasize something important because I think that Rio Cruz can also contribute with their experience uh, to be there in the production okay. and knowing deeply the industrial uh, issues of great production, industrial production to uh, format and to deal better with this 
idea of local production during the pandemic i'm sorry during the assembly we talked about it and we discussed it and we understood that the best term is regional co-production where we can identify uh, competences and technological and industrial abilities so that we can spread something with a technological and economic sense in the production and distribution of vaccines and diagnostic kits, for example, where Brazil uh, has an important participation. And it's incredible because in less than six months, we validated three molecular tests and two fast tests, and we delivered that to the Ministry of Health in uh, less than two years, uh, 18 million test and it was also very important for the Ministry of Health to have all the tools not only to diagnose uh, but also the theoretical guidance with the fast test and with also with the molecular test from which the Ministry of Health could have a more active surveillance of COVID. With that I would like to say that Fiocruz came to Brazil uh, again with the responsibility of not only thinking their industrial activity in the perspective of supplying the unified health system but also of being a supplier of products and technologies to this global effort to reduce the asymmetries in access to healthcare products it will demand from Fiocruz a new organization it's not only uh, it's not common to deal with the production and training at world level but we are discussing that already and this was one of the topics uh, in the discussion with the president and i participated in the discussion yesterday and i would also say with our partner uh, private partners last week i was in boston to follow a world conference on biotechnology and the main private and public producers participated. And in all the meetings, in individual and collective meetings, we presented this idea of uh, better production, more distributed uh, in a fair and equitative way so that we wouldn't have situations like the ones we face. I'm, I would say that we are having a great discussion. We need to develop this uh, discussion. It's not only public, uh, possible for only public labs to deal with that. We need a public-private effort. This week, Mauricio Zuma is discussing that. And the minister will be next week in a meeting with the BRICS ministers. No, I'm sorry, not BRICS, the Mercosur, uh, with a meeting in Argentina. And there will be a specific meeting to discuss the production of vaccines between Brazil and Argentina. Minister Nies will also be in Africa discussing with the ministers and BRICS. And there will be a day only to discuss the production at global level of vaccines. So this is a topic of discussion. It will demand an effort of coordination, fine-tuning with the ability to analyze what we have as competence installed. This week we'll start discussing with the Pasteur Institute so that they can join the efforts uh, in Dakar because uh, they are also a vaccine producer so we are starting this articulation of partnerships so that we can in fact uh, take this new role of producer and exporter of vaccine, but also to dissipate, uh, to spread the technology uh, to the country so that they can reduce the vulnerability of their uh, healthcare system. In this sense, I also emphasize the document that was approved uh, during the assembly. Uh, well, a document proposing a new framework to the economic models, uh, putting healthcare not only as a variable and a component of the economic uh, equation of development, but also 
as something necessary because it's more than desired. We need this result so that the economic agents can, in fact, understand healthcare as a goal, as what is, in fact, important in the development of a, uh, the economy or social development. Taking healthcare as the center of discussion, I think it's important and it's a new discussion, and we'll be able to go deeper in this discussion in the topics that I'm mentioning about local production requiring a level of uh, detachment of the pharmaceutical companies, mainly in the vaccine field, understanding the vaccine as a common asset with the treatment of the. Uh, people and the isolated initiatives of each country. So that's it, Paulo, once again, thank you for, for the opportunity of uh, talking to you and uh, I am very thrilled to the perspective of having a global health uh, with more strength and emphasis and more solidarity in the peoples of the world. Thank you, have a nice day. Thank you very much, President Mario. It's great to have you here with us. Great speech, great announcements, very important. I'm sure that this idea of the co-production regional level and the role of Fiocruz will grow a lot. It will probably be the topic of the next assembly. It was very welcome. This idea was very welcome and will be keep up with that. I know your agenda is very full. Thank you very much for making the time for being here with us, with the students in the course, in the seminar. We have the 180 students of the health diplomacy and global health students, and the seminar is also being broadcast on YouTube. We have here uh, Alexandre Gislene, the ambassador one of our great contributions here the ambassador was the person it was the our maestro during the assembly it's great to have you here thank you very much for making the time to be here i know you're between meetings so i give you the floor so you can give the students and the seminar your impressions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Guto. Am I being heard right? OK. I'd like to thank Chris, Paulo, for the opportunity to talk to these people participating in the seminar and the students in the course. We can have a small resume of what was the Brazilian participation in this assembly. In some different levels. I think my, my audio is kind of low, but I'll try to speak louder. First, we have to can analyze in a sequence, but let's put the facts on the table first so we have the basis to discuss. First fact is it was a big delegation, not only numerous, it was so numerous, but very representative. Seven secretariats that composed the Ministry of Health, five of them were present. One of the ones that were not there were represented by one of the directors, director of mental health. In addition to the presence of the minister, and this made possible for us to show presence, massive and high level presence in a lot of events that were going on 
in a parallel fashion to the assembly. Each of these secretaries had their own agendas, had messages, and different objectives, and it allowed Brazil to have, of course, not I'm talking about the, the Ministry of Health, because Dr. Mario Moreira was there, President of Fiocruz, there was a delegation from Anvisa and Butantan, the National Health Council President was also there, talking about social participation. All of this comprised in a picture that the participation of Brazil was horizontal. We were present. Uh, the highest number of events possible, bringing the message and defending our positions with a type of presence that it wasn't seen for a long time in, in the health assemblies. I'd have to research to, to understand how, or how long ago we had such a great participation. So this is the first fact, the Brazilian participation was not only focused on the minister's presence, of course, she, this the tandem of the bodies of the public health system that allowed this presence that it wasn't seen for a long time. The second fact I'd like to highlight here are the types of participation that our minister Nizia had. In what way the highest level participation of Brazil in the World Health Assembly had repercussions. In this second tier, we have three different levels. The first level is the speech itself. The minister talked in the plenary session. Where high authorities were there, and she brought this special message. She talked in Portuguese, even though she, she talks, she can speak English. Of course, there was an interpretation for English in other languages. So the minister had the opportunity of bringing this special message, correspond to the vision of the current administration of the challenges we have. So she talked about the necessity of strengthening the global scale of the national health system, not only to face pandemics, highlighting the need of strengthening the surveillance system, but also this, the whole system to be more ready to face pandemics. We don't know which kind or when they're coming, what kind of impact they will cause. Talking about the necessity of social inclusion in this treatment and the need for us to reach a resilient system to be able to produce medications or basic ingredients for health that not to leave us at the hands of international value chains that are very concentrated in sort of problems we had in the pandemics, the COVID-19 pandemics. And as Moreira was saying, to strengthen national production and to use the regional synergies of inputs, not only to seek self-sufficiency, but to 
decrease our dependency in the production of inputs and purchase of materials from abroad. The minister also talked about other subjects, the digital health and the need to face ethical issues, not only about the person's dignity. Another point she raised was the need to decrease inequalities within the states, to have the health as one of the elements, not only of public policies, but the relationship between governments and states. Her speech, maybe the, the most marking sentence was that inequality is bad for your health. This is a good quote. She has several messages that redimension not necessarily will change the course of the international debate, but repositions Brazil with its influence favoring the objectives that are based on what the population needs regarding her speech. Of course, Brazil participated in the debate of all the items and the agenda of the assembly, but in this institutional level of participation in the assembly, we need to highlight and secretary can was the best person to talk about this. And by Brazil's proposition, there was a resolution approved, including in the indigenous health issue in the agenda. It's unbelievable that we took 75 years for this to happen, but through Brazilian initiative, with the support of several governments, European Union, United States, and several others, we've been able to widen the institutional agenda in the assembly to include this theme that is very dear for the Brazilian situation with the, emerg the health emergency. Regarding the institutional part, it was a participation that was very substantial. We had different messages, we had different initiatives, and we were successful. In this chapter of the participation of the minister, participation in the assembly was very substantial. Second item, to use this opportunity to for the, all the ministers to be gathered for us to have a chance to talk to them, establish direct contact. And this was very fruitful. So I'm going to read here just with ministries of countries such as France, Norway, Spain, Netherlands, Singapore, Canada, Portugal, Chile, India, South Africa, BRICS, so dogmatis from Russia, South Africa, China, India, and Brazil and Argentina. Each of these meetings explored possibilities of open new collaboration fields. And this was very important for the next phase, the post-assembly, 
in addition to the institutional issues of the aid assembly, we'll deal directly with each one of these governments, talking about common agendas and conversion of interests and values and concerns, highlighting items of interest in, on both sides, for example, the digital health issue, because we talked about that with several countries, and it opens a wide a new array of possibilities of cooperation with the science and technology area, and Fiocruz will be a partner that will be very important in the implementation of these initiatives. There were also opportunities. Now let's move on to the third topic for meetings of international organizations. So we have the possibility, the minister had the possibility of bringing Brazil's message to institutional contexts that are very important that go beyond the WHO, ensuring the presence and ensuring that Brazil's voice is heard, the position of this new administration to be heard, and the main actors of the world health architecture. So she also participated in the, as one of the main speakers in this event and also nephrology and social participation where she was in tandem with the president of the national health council she also had a meeting with the ceo of cop 28 to deal about something very important that is a an innovative initiative of having in the agenda of copy a meeting of ministries of health to bring the institutional discussion and to the negotiation of climate change in an institutional way a discussion with the main players of healthcare on the impact and the climate change and health so this is a very significant change in the international health agenda with the explicitation of its link with the environment and with this discussion with the CEO of COP28, uh, there will be the basis for the Brazilian participation in this meeting of ministers of health in COP. Oh, there was also a meeting with the Global Fund and the Secretary of uh, Control of Tobacco and uh, a dinner with the people from the Economic World Forum and a discussion with the United Directors with their participation in the global uh, participation in UNITAS and uh, how everything will be. And the minister also participated in a big event carried out by Gafi and UNICEF about immunization. And I also mentioned her participation in the meeting of BRICS with an informal lunch before the meeting, the formal meeting that will happen in South Africa in the first week of August. Well, this is the summary of four days of a minister in Trindade in Geneva. Obviously, the assembly was longer. It lasted basically one week, and they discussed uh, climate topics in their context of the institutional <clears throat> work there were emphatic moments where brazil organized a parallel event to talk about the resolution about the indigenous health care and there was a meeting with the presence of the minister so the brazilian agenda 
was there with the participation of the Secretary Gadelia and many other participations, and like the Secretary Nelson Fernandes, uh, who had also a very important participation talking in the plenary of the uh, WHO. So it was a high level participation of high intensity and with the potential favorable impact to Brazil in a very significant way. What we would hear, and the minister had the opportunity to say that when she talked, that more than saying what we heard from the other delegation is that Brazil is back on track. And maybe this is the summary of the Brazilian participation in this assembly. Obviously, this is the message to this assemblage, to the next ones. We need to show what we are there for. So now we have to work to go deeper on the initiatives that we are launching. But at this moment, uh, the ministry was clear and, well, we shared the idea with everyone. So this is an overview that I would like to bring to you. And I'm here available if you are interested in having any interaction with our participants. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ambassador Gislaini, as always, a very clear uh, explanation and a very good uh, example when I was saying that we have the assembly communication with a 3G, 4G, 5G, so you brought in a very uh, clear way the intensity of the assembly and the multiplicity and the importance and the high level of commitment uh, of consequences and everything that is important, like uh, despite a new government, let's say, a uh, recent ministry, we see how harmonic you are in the participation that I could witness. And uh, always guided by Ambassador Gislaine, so everything went quite well in Geneva. And, uh, it is also very important to emphasize that, that. well, we know you are quite uh, busy there. You are coming back from an international trip, and our uh, participants here are bringing a lot of questions. We'll then send the questions for your answers, and we'll see how uh, you can have greater interaction, because I think it was a great class of diplomacy in health to all of us. This is uh, the training of many students in courses, so I think it's very important uh, for them to have this sincere overview that you brought to them about how it is to guide uh, discussion in the World Health Assembly. I guess there will be many other questions in other moments, so we would also like to know if you have your final comments for you. Paulo Yu, well, I would like to thank him for his participation and for his coordination work in the many segments of the Ministry of Health, not only regarding the assembly, but also regarding the Brazilian participation in the presidency of Mercosul in the discussions that will start this July, and also the participation of Brazil in the assembly that starts on the 20th and uh, the one that will start in December. And Ambassador will talk about this topic with our participants and students in the afternoon. I know that your agenda is quite busy uh, and full of meetings, uh, but it will be a pleasure to have your presence here if you want to come back in the afternoon because we will discuss a lot of the agenda that is coordinated by ESA and that is so important about 
health in the Amazon and in Mercosur and in G20. And the summit of the G20 that will happen in September. So I would like to thank you for your presence. There is a colleague of yours here that is quite none of you and the friend of Ambassador Ocasa that took your job, uh, job position in 20, from 2003 to 2008. And now he is in the Brazilian consulate in Cordoba and he will teach about the systems of the United Nations this afternoon. So, just for you to know the agenda, I've already said just that Santiago Dutchland is from Rio Grande do Sul, Porto Alegre, and his family is known to people there. So, if you know Rio Grande do Sul, they are very important families. So, uh, they are quite representative there. So, thank you, Ambassador, for your contribution to this seminar. And now let's go on with it. Thank you very much. Well, I thank you for the opportunity. Thank you very much, Dr. Paulo, uh, Dr. Augusto. If possible, I'll come back, but I'll leave now. Thank you, and from Porto Alegre, our cheers to you. And let's go on with our seminar as I will bring uh, to the conversation a small video this is a surprise of one more ambassador. You see how Chris is deep diplomacy. We have three ambassadors in one session. Uh, I guess the technician can uh, play the video now. Well, as you can see, something happened. We could not hear good. É você, Paulo, é vocês que pararam. Eu tô, eu tô Paulo, aqui. you are the ones who are having problems. I am here, so let me play the video. Recording stopped. Recording in progress. Guto, the floor is yours. Yes, I have to share my screen here to play the video. Can you hear the video? No. Nope. So just a second here. We can't hear you. So the WHO has produced only one international agreement. Now you can hear, right? Sim. My greetings from Geneva to this event in Brazil on behalf of the United Nations. I would like to talk to you that in 75 years of existence, the WHO has produced only one international agreement. My greetings from Geneva, from the Brazilian media, uh, mission with the UN. I would like to tell you that over the 75 years of existence, the WHO has produced only one international agreement on Article 19, that was the Convention about the Control of Tobacco. And it's protocol of... Uh, <clears throat> on the production of tobacco. The other body of rules was the International Sanitation Agreement, RSE, of 2005, adopted on Article 25, 21 of the WHO Constitution. So there were not many examples of negotiations on agreements and international experience, binding experiences. At this moment, we have to, due to the pandemic and the disaster, that happened, we decided to have a negotiation of a future agreement. We don't know if it will be a convention, a treaty, but a binding agreement with legal provisions, bringing more solidarity and more uh, coordination to prevent and to have prompt answers uh, response to the pandemic and the recovery of the 
healthcare systems. This project is called IMB, which means the Intergovernmental Negotiation Body. Another negotiation is the working group to deal with the update of san international sanitary regulation. So we have two different processes of different natures where Brazil tries to bring to the discussion the need of more equity in access to the products when there is a problem of epidemiological origin as serious as the pandemic. So it is necessary to have a free and fair, prompt access at a fair price that is uh, able to save lives or decrease the suffering of the affected people. On the other hand, on the sanitary regulation, Brazil's position is in the sense of having updates in a more balanced way without too much intrusion to our abilities uh, to work, but also with the possibilities of making other countries to monitor as well this epidemiological burden, uh, outbreaks, I'm sorry, and the uh, international agreement to Brazil, the priority is to ensure the local production, the increase of the capacity that we have, the transfer of technologies, or better saying, the co-development of technological solutions, and also uh, the shared benefits when there is also the sharing of pathogens. These are some of the important topics to Brazil that are under discussion, the negotiations are ongoing, and even at this moment there is a discussion and Brazil is working strongly to bring to our interest, always in coordination with our country. In the work group, our position is also technically balanced in the sense of recognizing the space for update, but this space cannot aggravate the difference in levels of development in the countries that already have monitoring capacity and others that still need to develop it. So these are two very important exercises that possibly will bring on the WHO to have a set of rules that are, is a little more sharp and focusing on decreasing the inequality in the global health level. So this was the message from Ambassador Tovar, our ambassador in Geneva, on another great articulator and responsible for the success during the assembly. And we have the great pleasure to have our colleague and coordinator of the work group on RSE UNB, Professor Daisy Ventura, who is already here with us. And I'd like to, oh, there she is. Welcome. I know you're very busy and you opened the space for us. So we have this small video that our colleague Luana was able to get. Luana is, is flying right now. And she sent her message and we also thank her and she also thanked Pamela and President. So Daisy, we're with you. This was a very brief comment by the Ambassador Tova. We are here in the group of the students. We are inaugurating the course. Paulo gave us this privilege of coordinating this session and also the seminar, the traditional session for Chris, which is being broadcast through the social channels with great audience. Daisy, you have the floor. Welcome. Thank you very much, Guto, dear, I see Paulo, Claudia, if I'm not mistaken. Very small here, but I see that we have a greatly qualified audience with the organizers and the participants of the course. 
So it is a huge joy to be here participating in this type of meeting in the Fiocruz International Center. To keep these health, global health issues with a qualified technical view, but also with the political commitment, which is to defend a global health view, focus on equality in a critical story of what is the governance and global health. It's a great privilege to be here. I'm sorry for my voice. I, am, I have a case of sinusitis. It's, it's been compromising my health for a few weeks, but I kept what I was able to keep from the voice to talk for you with you for a few minutes on such an important topic. It's good to, to hear the synthesis by Ambassador Tovar before talking to you, what dear to ask me to, which is a panorama of these negotiations that are go ongoing in the WHO for 15 minutes. Of course, the first thing is to you, the joint initiative with Fiocruz and the University of Sao Paulo, creating a work group that keeps up with this negotiation, all the material of the gold group, the videos of the meetings, the documents that were presented, our technical notes on a website that is saudeglobal.org. It will be on the chat here. And through this website, you can get to know the work group and to know more details of what we've been doing right now but also to take a look at articles and documents that have been published about the topic so far. And what I'd like to do with this inauguration moment of the course in which you will know and discuss the topics that go through these negotiations, and in a general way, the great issues that permeate the agenda, what we call today global health, First thing I'd like to say is the tension there is historically in global health, and now in these negotiations, it's no different. They appear in the speech of the Ambassador Tovar that we heard. He shows the position of Brazil as a position in these negotiations that seek to to show the reduction of the asymmetries between countries, especially in the negotiations about international emergencies, the reduction in asymmetries in the capacity of answering events and international emergencies or even pandemics. Every pandemic is a health, a public health emergency international level, but the the opposite is not always true. We just heard about MPOX. It wasn't a pandemic, fortunately. We had the huge Ebola crisis that were emergencies in 2014 and 2019, but they were not pandemics. So the international framework covers the domain that goes beyond pandemics, not only diseases, but any threat that can be considered uh, international emergency in the sense that it can propagate internationally, but it requires international coordination in the answering, determining the scope of the international health framework. But we felt when we talked about the new agreement regarding pandemics, this tension that marks global health since the first convention in 1851 in Paris, between economic interests that are very potent interests and economic interests that are accompanied by political interests in a certain worldview and health and health as a market. And 
the instrument of economic development, focus on the interest of the actors more than in the health of the population. And on the other hand, we have a view that we call a view inspired in the determinants of health, but it's been named social medicine, critical view of global health. Names can be several, but it's another vision and this other vision that resists the mercantilization of health, the health as instrument of the market and of this determined vision of our economic system. We could meet in this instrument in the agreement on pandemics and the international health framework. Important opportunity to promote changes that are very important if we really want to improve the health of populations and to strengthen the international dimensions, especially the WHO. If these are our objectives, these two instruments can be a great opportunity. But it also reflects on the contrary way, you could say in a negative way, in the sense that we cannot have these instruments not only not represent the important advancement in inequality and reduction of asymmetries in socials and in health fields, but we have to be careful to make these instruments not to be instruments of the global health security for them to become huge surveillance schemes to appropriate of our data and information related to our health systems and what happens in our countries, just as a way to inform quicker the developed world what's going on here and close quickly the developed countries in relation to other states of lesser income that could represent threats. We are very attentive to this critical view of these instruments, transforming them, them in opportunities of working with the reduction of asymmetries, consecrating rights that are recognized in several countries and even in the countries that they are recognized to improve this level of respect and not allow these negotiations to transform for this situation to be affirmed. I have absolute trust in the current Brazilian government that they will act in this sense. So we have this late leadership in Brazil because unfortunately in the previous term it, the tradition of leadership was disrupted and Brazil is regaining this position now, but we are in disadvantage of having been, having lived four horrible years that we did and it reflected on our position, international position regarding health. And we all know that Brazil abandoned themes that were very traditional, abandoning progressive, progressive agendas to focus on alignment with Trump government and conservative alliances in the health field. So Brazil had another type of protagonism, unfortunately. Now we reach these negotiations trying to compensate for the lost time, trying to build alliances in several topics. The second observation I make, I, I have one eye on the clock here. The second observation I'd like to make is that our way of seeing these negotiations, the international negotiations, an agenda that needs to be rescued, in which Brazil has a historical advantage, is the environmental and human rights and social protection agendas. We're very good at this. We know how to do this. We know how to do international cooperation. Paulo is a, is a reference 
of this topic, such as Fiocruz in a general way. So these aspects, sorry, these positive aspects, what we have to give, not only Brazil, but other countries in the world, what we call the development world, we need to go into these negotiations with concrete propositions and not have these spaces in these instruments so we can build commitments. Of course, we shouldn't be eluded about the political moment we live in the world. It's a world at war, it's a world with conservative governments in important countries. But even in countries such as in the United States and Brazil that we've been able to remove the far right from leadership. The movements are very strong and they are very interested in the health topics, but for reasons of the market and this customs agenda. But it's not an easy situation for us to expect miracles or great advances, but there are issues that we can advance with commitment levels that are possible to be reached. The World Health Assembly, we have a convention, for example, they have a majority, qualified majority voting, two thirds. So this agreement project will be voted next May. And the International Health Framework has a majority voting. We don't need consensus, but we need to build this two-thirds in the case of the convention and just simple majority in a forum that has 194 voters. More than the voting, we need the commitment for the leadership. We can build this view in the agreement on pandemics to contemplate aspects of rights to access to benefits, and obligation of social protection while the pandemics are ongoing, and in the international health framework, we can have emphasis in the development and strengthening the, of the health systems. As if we analyze the international sanitation regulation, we we'll read it and be convinced that without a strong and structured healthcare system, we can develop the ability to detect or to respond to international emergencies. So the civil society needs to be more and more involved. These experts need to talk about it and uh, develop the subject and propose solutions. If we have a convention or a treaty, it will also be incorporated to the national order. So we'll have an important national debate that will be an opportunity to discuss the topic. And therefore, my minutes are finishing, also my voice. But anyway, uh, therefore, the goal of Gudu and Paulo to give me the opportunity to talk to you in the opening of this course is to stimulate the curiosity. You to be interested on the topic and follow the meetings of our uh, DT that will be back in the second semester so that you are interested in that and pay attention to the fact that our indifference about the negotiation is in fact uh, a hypothesis of what they could be. So without too much or too little, uh, not seeing the negotiations as a burden that we have to take nor as something understood as only damage. And uh, this is not how we'll change the global health. It won't be by decree. So it is a rare opportunity that we have to follow the review of a regulation and the creation of a new international agreement and Brazil had an important role on the discussions on tobacco and now they will be important again in the discussions of the pandemic so that we can first and foremost we don't forget the pandemic, the COVID-19, because I think many people had already forgotten it and they learned nothing and they forgot it. So we see political forces working in Brazil in a very strong way in the sense of 
destroying this agenda. The federal government is resisting and we need to work together so that we allow the players of the federal government with this progressive view of the global health be strengthened and supported and that we say well we have the support of the academia and the civil society and the support of people dealing with the global health to bring another view of the negotiation. Well Guru, I don't know if I could uh, play my role here, but it was a pleasure and I'll be able available to discuss that and we are partners on that. So cheers to everyone. Daisy, thank you very much for your uh, presentation and your message that is all quite clear. Because one thing is buying something that you take home, it doesn't work, and you send to the trash can. But the other thing is to deal with things that will be bad for your health. So your uh, message is clear. I can see many comments in the chat, and I'm pretty sure that all the students will be stimulated to participate in the GT. GT will be taken again. So I think this is the main point here. This next month is going to be very important to think a lot and go deeper in the discussions and have the best possible conditions to take this voice ahead to understand this opportunity, as you said, to interfere in the global health to the future. This is a generational opportunity. The next one, I don't know, may take 50 years. So your message is very important. I thank you very much. I know Paulo is there eager to say something. So Paulo, go on. The floor is yours. Daisy, thank you very much for your intervention. It's very important for you to mention uh, to everyone, uh, the working group of uh, crew is an invitation to the participation. Do you know the seminars also have open date for the working group. So when you and Guto, our heads of the working group, decide to create an advanced seminar, we'll organize it so that the participants of this course as well as the audience with other participations are there and we'll have then the possibility of having a more focused debate on uh, the negotiation body and uh, with the sanitary regulations. I can see that it holds in Sao Paulo, right? Because I can see it with the blouse that you are wearing. Yes, it's cold and I came from Rio Grande do Sul bringing the cold weather. Well, I was in Rio Grande do Sul on the seminar about a se on the seminar about the health and the frontiers and we'll discuss that with our students as well. And we were in the discussions with Corrientes in Uruguay and Rio Grande do Sul about the one health and the control of diseases. Good was also there and he is in Porto Alegre today. And we'll have a seminar about One Health to all students. Even the next seminar will be on June 28th to this course. And we'll talk about it, COVID-19 COVID and other emergencies. We'll discuss the origin of the pathogen. We'll discuss well, this is just a merchandising of the next seminar. And we'll discuss all the topics of disease control as an important topic in the diplomacy of health as it depends not only on technical negotiation, but as Guto said, we also depend on political negotiation because the frontier is a main uh, political discussion. I was in São Borja last week and it's incredible the flow of trucks with more than 2,000 trucks crossing the frontier to Argentina. So we imagine how difficult uh, it is to control disease, for example, in the sense that you transport food and livestock, and we'll have a debate on that as well on June 28th. 
Daisy, thank you very much. Cheers on behalf of everyone here. Well, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Daisy. Thank you very much. Well, we'll now go on. We have now Paula Regis, who was there uh, on a, with Mariuel in a, on a group of four. And we had a wonderful journalist following us as well there and was the head of communication as we did that in Geneva and it was very important. She had a very important role to play. And I you asked me to mention that because before I forgot Pamela that he is her, his direct assessor. And he asked me to mention her and to thank on behalf of Mario uh, for her participation. So Paula Reg, Luana Bermuda, who is traveling, I don't know if she's there, but she would connect when she arrived in Pamela Link and me. So Paula, now the floor is yours. You decide now what was not talked already, so you will talk about we didn't talk yet. You have your time before we reach the final surprise of this event. Paula, the floor is yours. Well, good to thank you very much. Thank you for your work. It's a pleasure to be here with uh, so many uh, friends' faces, and it's a pleasure to be here with you in this event. I would also ask you to share my screen as we comment on the topic. So just to bring a little bit of the topic, trying to talk about what happened in the uh, World Assembly this year. So we had this mention of the diagram including the assemblies and different institutions that will be part of the discussion on global health and the importance of being there. And what we need to understand is that the discussion don't start or finish only on May when we are there, when the assembly is happening. So all the discussions go through and reference moments that happened before, and they will finish at the assembly. And during the assembly, we have a more bureaucratic discussion in specific terms of applying the measures approved. So we have the political development and agreement and alignment that happen in the different bodies that will be there. Next slide, please. So besides the assembly for us to understand the institutional body and the institutional moment of WHO with this diplomatic discussion about the global uh, health agenda, we go to the general director of the and the secretaries that are part of the discussion in the agenda. So the general director is there and he is in the second mandate of management in WHO. And since last year, he started the planning of the five Ps that we call. It will be the big plan, as you see while I speak, that it goes through the different priorities in health. The first P is the promotion of health. And what is the promotion of health? It is the prevention of disease and not only communicable diseases, but uh, preventable diseases and the specific work on the cause factors. So some examples of what it would be the promotion of health is the taxation of low nutrition, products and taxation of tobacco and greater control on food with its uh, trans fat and sugar and salt and how it is institutionalized and instituted in different countries and different state members. And there is a relation with the production of trash. And we know uh, the impact of health installation has of elements of chemicals in the production of plastic that will be accentuated somehow. And also the promotion of health in the activities that are implied on there, like physical activities and what is related to uh, health aging. The second P is provision of health. So the characteristics of strengthening and the primary healthcare system and in the main mechanism for us to be able to have universal coverage on health. Other strategy that is in line with this health provision 
is the vaccination campaign that was called by the WHO as the big catch-up. We know it was deeper with the COVID crisis, with the reduction of vaccination coverage in the world. But it's there since the COVID and with all the diseases like coverage for polio, bacterial and viruses diseases. And the other P in the provision is strategy uh, treat tuberculosis with the strategies that was mentioned by the general director with the possibility of reducing the treatment of tuberculosis uh, from 18 or 12 months to six months and the direct relation to health and uh, the target audience and strategy to prevent malaria, HPV, and how to stimulate uh, breastfeeding and other works with the relation to uh, mother and child health and deal with immigrants and refugees. We know that currently we have one in every eight people being a migrant or displacing for some reason. And we know how important it is to the universal coverage and investment in healthcare professionals. We know that we have uh, new consequences of COVID-19 and the lack of services provided due to the lack of maintenance of healthcare professionals in the qualification and the minimum working condition. Next slide, please. The third P is protecting health. So how do you understand it with the strengthening of the global architecture of health? So we have the emergency program of WHO and despite to having uh, COVID uh, as a strong point, we also have other emergencies like MPOX and other emergencies and uh, the WHO has responded to more than 70 emergencies. So if it, it's not because it doesn't have a global scale that it's not a, a health emergency and that the WHO won't work in this emergency. And also we have the mechanisms of uh, protection with funding and we know this is very important to prevent uh, medical measures that are important for an emergency and also to maintain the healthcare system. So one of the things that we have that was mentioned by WHO was the global fund creation for pandemics and the global fund for uh, direct work in the pandemic with the articulation involved the WHO and other entities and global funding is working at this emergency moment. The fourth B is powering, powering of health. Try to conclude this moment of the power of science, research, innovation, data management, and partnership to generate impact for the population. Two topics, which are, which is the Secretariat of the WHO, different hubs for the development of new technology or improvement of these technologies, as the RNA messenger vaccine production hub. And it's very important this technological moment and this information that we have is how to manage this data in a good way, ethical way that's reverted to the communities. And the last P is performing for help. There's no direct translation to Portuguese for the P to, to make sense, but it's the development for health can be stronger and well-funded and be done in a sustainable way. Other topics that are worked here is the response to bad conducts and harassment in the work of the organization. Some employees went through this process last year, so it's a social repair and also the work of the WHO for gender equality, not only in the main office in Geneva, but in the representations all over the world. More than 60% of the workforce is represented by people of female gender, but it's not highlighted enough. So we should highlight the way to level these professionals. So we reached the assembly, all these 
discussions, not only from 2023 on, but all the work of WHO that is reverted in the moment of the assembly. This sentence is the topic here. Each year, the secretariat, alongside the decision of the general director, they choose a topic. And in this year, celebrating the 75th birthday, WHO, 75 years old, saving lives, fostering health for everyone. So all these between parentheses are the direct links to the mentions I'm going to make. So you can find in the website of the WHO with this code, you can find the document I refer to. Documents are long, but they're easy to understand. The importance of this confirmation and what's being done, not only within the organization, but also referring about the state, member state work being done. Reflecting the five Ps, these resolutions have the examples of this work. So the first is the WHO budget for the biennial. It is catalyzed and reviewed every two years. And this year was approved with the increase for facing health emergencies and for programs that are pre-established. And what's the importance of this? We know, for example, in the moment of COVID-19, WHO was important for the organization and solidarity between countries and the importance of financial sustainability, we, in, especially in countries that don't have well-structured health systems. The crisis of this moment was especially about gathering resources. The second document is the reorientation of the health system for primary attention in health with as a resilient basis for the universal coverage in health. In the scenario of the General Assembly of the UN, there will be three high-level meetings with health topics. And one of them will be about the universal coverage in health. And one of the proposals brought by the WHO is by strengthening national strategies and regional collaborations in strengthening health, we can create this system of response to emergency. So the interruption of the delivery of medications and vaccination programs and how this has diff direct impact after the moment of the greater crisis. So the strengthening of the primary attention in health, we have an example in health in Brazil, the capillarity we have here, especially in the regional and local context, that is so unique. The third document is the renewal of the global strategy for health of women, children, and adolescents. This document has been adopted in 2016 in the assembly. And it has been widened in the 2030 agenda. The impact in specific health brought by COVID-19, but the advancements as well. It fosters breastfeeding and healthy practices for the health of women, children, and adolescents, also bringing perspectives for the health and human rights of this population. Another plan that is renewed during the assembly is the Global Action Plan for the Health of Migrants and Refugees. It would end this year and was extended to 2030. So we can have more coverage of these situations. And as we mentioned before, one of the data that is in the document is one in eight people are in vulnerable positions and are considered migrants or forcibly displaced. These people are exposed to such adverse conditions 
such explicit situations of lack of access to conditions that they are fundamental pieces for the universal coverage to be reached. The actions in national levels and the capacities of dealing with these populations and transborder health, multiple approach. So when we have the largest migrations, they carry with them specific health conditions. Another resolution that was approved in the assembly was a resolution on the impact of chemical products, residues, and pollution in human health. We can see this in a much clearer way all the impact of chemical residues in the population directly on their health. We know that there are respiratory problems and contamination with lead and other elements. We know the direct impact that they have on contamination of water with mercury, for example, and this is also linked to the unified health. We cannot separate the health of the environment and implying directly in the practice and the possibility of a healthier life, independent of being in the city or a rural environment. Just going back to something I said previously, it also talks about the importance of the management of residues in health installations. If you don't think about the hospital management, you have contaminant residue, the plastics and microplastics, syringes, medications. All of this is coupled to contents that cannot be managed in such a simple way. So how we transform these installations in healthier environments? Another topic that was very highlighted in the pandemics was the access to medicinal oxygen. It is on the list of essential medications as a therapy that cannot be substituted. And as we had this closer to our day to day in the context of the pandemics of COVID-19, but anyone that has the need for that will have the direct impact. This concept is also broad. For example, the engineering teams for the installations to be built. And when we have this in a place that has the resources, but we should also have this in a place that has no resource for this to be done. So through this resolution, the, the WHO focusing on supporting the, the member states that need the support, that has the physical needs for the substance of this medication, something so essential such as oxygen. And other than the structural portion here, the correct management of the supply chain, the supply of oxygen and the persistency of or lack of them in a specific environment to be reported to the authorities. The presence or not, or the amount of oxygen used in the health environments to be reported to the entities responsible. So this can be direct part of the management list of the presence or not of that. Within the social determinants of health, we have the two resolution. The health of indigenous populations, and I'm not going back to this because this has been said, it's fundamental for the support, not only because it's something brought by Brazil, but it's interesting to have different aspects of different indigenous populations in the construction of this document. So we have the Brazilian perspective of the needs, but the idea to make this a global action plan 
that will be presented in 2016, but not something to be done just on paper, but we will turn into measures and decision-making this national and regional aspects. Another topic is the Global Initiative for Health and Peace. It was presented in 2019 in the Assembly between Oman and Switzerland. And the idea is health to be the central point in the direct articulation in conflicts. So health is also seen as an instrument for peace. Obviously, we've seen the, the space that it's been taking since last year, since the conflict between Russia and Ukraine started, and a lot of discussion on the topic, and how this health in the field can be used, but for it not to enter into what they call the critical role of health in this point, but not for it not to go into bigger conflicts. It's a concern brought by the member states and this positioning together with Brazil and India and South Africa. For it to be used as an instrument, it goes out of the reach. I think, I believe you will discuss during the afternoon and Coming to the end, what we reinforce in the previous presentations had this presence of COVID-19 being highlighted. ...da infecção, mas exatamente por conta de ter abalado diversas estruturas de todos esses sistemas. But because we disturb the structures of all, every system, thinking about the social context and the implications of mental health and economic implications and so on. So both documents, this Two documents that I brought to the agenda of the WHO assembly, they will discuss about the work of WHO and the strengthening of this year to prepare and to respond to the pandemics. And they bring the concepts of having numbers and uh, letters. So they bring, they bring the five C's of response to the emergency public health and emergency emergency to the direct impact that will be brought just like COVID-19 and in global aspects. So the first C will be collaborative surveillance. So as I said before, the importance of data management and exchange information, the proper way uh, is to revert into uh, actions at the proper time in a faster and more assertive way. So the importance of having the link between data management and surveillance and epidemiological data and also having communication in the proper way and in a joint way. The second C will be the community protection. And why a community has a central point? Because we understand that the measures in the emergency context affect people in different demands and having communities as the actor and proposer of the measure is important. We need to have the participation of the community and the institution measures, otherwise we won't have a complete assertivity of the work. So the idea of protecting community is that we are there in the discussion of the proposed situations and that we take into consideration information and exchange of information and access and the way we communicate, we know that in this concept of the pandemic, uh, of the COVID and the hypopandemic, so how to manage information. And we know that the information is faster so that we have the community side by side with a more assertive communication. In a way, to understand what's happening in the different communities and also that the community to understand what is being proposed there. The third thing would be care. Uh, in a safe way and in a stable way. So care to be varied in the different layers of health. So we dialogue with, uh, this is a dialogue with what I mentioned before, so that we maintain the healthcare system, even in emergency moments, so that we have the position of the healthcare system, regardless of the emergency or not. So 
we remember that during the peak of the COVID-19, we stopped having assistance for chronic diseases like diabetes, hypertension. Some countries suffered with interruption of tuberculosis and HIV medication distribution and no impact of that. And also, uh, people in the community can need, uh, need to have access to different levels of attention. So if we need particularities of primary care, so that the person needs uh, access to different levels of health care as needed. The fourth C is the social measures. Uh, we know that during the pandemic, how difficult it was to have access to diagnosis, effective treatment, vaccines, and how much it is important to think about the response to health emergencies. So, we need to think not only of solidarity, but cooperation among countries so that everyone has access to what they are entitled to. And the last point that goes with everything that I mentioned is the coordination during emergency. It doesn't matter having uh, individual action. We need more effort in a more spread way, in a collaborative way, and in a coordinated way. So we can talk about that for a long time. So what I brought is probably one fifth of the total agenda, but this is what has repercussions both for what we are working with and due to the real impact of the measures. And if you click the WHO website, you can see this reference with a lot of work presented there, and it's very nice and quite rich for to read that so that we can always have a fruitful moment of discussion. So that's it, Guto. <clears throat> Just a second, Guto. I put in the chat the access to the document in English or Spanish. So you have all the documents mentioned by Paula, and access is there in the, in the chat. Thank you, Paulinha. Thank you very much. Now, now let's have our closing session, so I'll share with you one slide to talk about some specific topic that is uh, climate that was something mentioned in all the context of the assembly, so there was even a technical session that is available on the website of WHO. And the technical sessions, we can see the videos with the participation of high level of people. Um processo longo. A saúde... And it's the acknowledgement of a long process of climate changes that, with all the discussions since '92, the agreement that was signed, healthcare was not one of the uh, was uh, not one of the uh, points of agreement. So they focused on carbon and environmental meteorological measures, uh, and they didn't discuss the health care. In 2015, with the Paris Agreement, it started being included, and there was an important document of the WHO dealing with this topic, and things were already happening, and uh, there were already repercussions in health care. So in 2017, the Secretariat launches an initiative on health and climate surveillance, but in England, in COP26, we have the launch of this alliance for the change of action. This is an alliance for concrete action. And today in COP28, we have Ambassador Gislaine mentioning that briefly, there was the announcement that on December the 3rd this year, during COP28, there will be the World Health Care Day. So this is the first time in the Climate Convention that there will be a specific day for health, to discuss the health. So here we have the images that you can see in the WHO website and also the Alliance of Climate and Health with a great celebration of the public healthcare community on the topic. There is also documents available at the WHO website where you can see this, and this is what I would like to emphasize. As we don't have a lot of time, I won't go deeper. So, Paul, I would ask you to play the last surprise video that is quite important. Alex, you can put the video of the secretary. Alex, can you play the video?
Okay, we are playing it already. I would like to greet uh, with the cheers people from Chris for the seminar to discuss the 76th meeting of the WHO Assembly. Congratulations, Dr. Paulo Booz, who is moderating this panel, all the participants, our uh, president, Luis, our secretary, baby, Ambassador Gislaini, a great partner of us, Paula Hedges. How nice the young people invading the sessions is also very important. Besides the Ziventura that we all admire so much. I would like to say that I am very satisfied and I would like to be there with you first because it was a hard work that I was honored to be indicated by me. Tunisia to, along with Ambassador Tova, represent Brazil in the Brazilian Kitchen Eve, representing Brazil in the executive group, not only saying that Brazil is back and science is back, but something that I didn't say before that the Ministry of Health is back. We now have a national health authority that makes Brazil proud, uh, and there we can. Uh, we could approve the proposal to be analyzed in the final uh, stage of indigenous health that emerges from the work of Chris. So see how important Chris it is in the global context, so bringing this idea that is a little late in terms of the routine of the WHO assembly. And I was honor to take this idea to discuss and to fight for this idea and say that there was no plan B. It was a matter of a commitment with diversity and the reduction of uh, inequalities and taking the indigenous people as the world symbol of a new perspective of global health brought by Brazil. A second dimension that I would like to emphasize is the presence of our secretary in the World Assembly, showing that nobody makes politics for the geographic population. The politics for the uh, vulnerable population should be with their participation and leadership. And this is a very important point, and maybe you didn't understand how important you're going to the assembly was showing the leadership of the indigenous population. Uh, then I would like to talk about the local production of science, technology, and innovation emerging strongly. This is a thesis that we've been defending for 20 years in Brazil, that we need to be strong and complex working in the periphery like the global south as we do uh, currently so without it we would have inequality and exclusion from the process as we saw in the case of the vaccine where some countries have four times more uh, doses than the whole population and other countries wouldn't have one single vaccine so the production of knowledge is a core element for the preparation and the ability for us to have a, a system of global health that is for uh, with more solidarity and equality. But I would also like to mention the attention to the biased appropriation of local production, as if it is the country. Some countries have knowledge, and some countries tax products. You no, know, we in our view. It's more comprehensive and richer because we bring with it the need to break with the strong global asymmetry where the patents in health are concentrated in uh, not 90% uh, of the patents are concentrated in only 10 countries with a small group of companies. The asymmetry and monopoly and exclusion won't help us to have inclusion in global health. Now we'll face the colonialism in the field of production. The production is knowledge and capacity of innovation and a productive system, not only to uh, 
deal with the pandemic, but a productive system that is a response to a new uh, economy, regional and national economy, and a global economy as well, to have economy as a service of life. Cheers to Chris and to the seminar that is so important and that will be material for us to continue with our participation in the Health Assembly. Wonderful, very fast, the Secretary of Science and Technology of the uh, opening some space to his agenda. He is very busy now with the many different agendas, but he brings this tune that is so important to close our seminar. I would just follow to have a brief topic that is so important and was very important in Geneva that was discussed at the moment, that is the digital health. Digital health was discussed a lot by Regina. She was one of the founders of that in the WHO with the network of uh, libraries and many activities in the health. But this digital action is so strong and an important topic that is professional and section. And we had a wonderful participation with Anistella Dadi, the secretary that was present there, participating in many of the meetings in a very uh, competitive way, bringing a lot of tasks to us, following a increase, and we need to analyze digital health being in the end strongly. And due to the COVID pandemic, it showed the needs of many factors of digital health, but it is also in the agenda in an important way. Another important presence is the coordinator of mental health that was there, that was mentioned by Ambassador Gisleni, who also had an important framework and mental health also had an important space in discussion. And I would like to mention that. And with that, I finish and I thank Paulo for your generosity of giving the opportunity to moderate this high level session. We had wonderful presences, and probably this will be one of the most visited uh, seminars uh, due to its quality corresponding to the quality of Chris and the quality of Chris seminars. So I pass on the floor to Paulo to, for the closing words. Thank you. Thank you, Guto. Thank you in the audience. In the afternoon today, we'll have an opportunity of having comments and questions, including about the seminar from the morning, because we are past time and also the interpreters have to rest. So at 1.30, we will be back with the course and the questions that have not been answered or commented in the chat that have been raised by the students can be solved in the afternoon. Thank you, Gutu, for the great conducting. You're alongside the best hosts in Brazilian TV your true TV anchor, and I think the students were able to understand about the important participation weaving through the presentations, commenting between one and the other. Excellent work. Paulinha also here with me and all the presenters as well. We hope all the students and all the participants through YouTube. We're more than 300 people watching live, so more than 500 people watching the seminar, and it will be available since the moment the broadcast ends at the address I sent you. If you want to rewatch them, the seminar, you can do it immediately. Thank you. See you in one hour. 1.30, we'll be back.